All right, this is Mr. Gilliam, and today we're going to talk about more ratios and proportions, um, but we're going to look at some polygons that are similar. So this is a lot like when we talked about congruent polygons, how each side had to be congruent and each angle, each corresponding angle had to be congruent and all that. Well, it's kind of the same thing today with similarity, except for uh, the angles are the only thing that need to be congruent, but there is a requirement for the sides. They have to be what we call proportional. Okay, they have to have the same ratio from uh, for each corresponding side. So, uh, I guess I could just read the definition to you. Uh, it says they're similar if their corresponding angles are congruent. That's really important. Oops. If the angles are congruent and uh, their side lengths are proportional. Okay, and then we call them similar. All right, so we talked about congruent polygons where they have to be exactly the same on each side, each angle has to be exactly the same. Now we're talking similar. So we're going to use these ratios that we've been practicing, these proportions. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show that ABCD is similar to WXYZ. All right, um, if this congruent statement is true, then I know that the order matters. So I know angle A should be congruent to angle W. Angle B should be congruent to angle X, angle C to angle Y, and angle D to angle Z. And I'm not even looking at the diagram right now. I'm just looking specifically at this congruent statement. Okay, A's in the first spot, W. They're, they should be equal, congruent. B and X, C and Y, D and Z. All right, now let's look over our diagram and make sure that is the case. A and W. A and W. Okay, those are the same exact angle. B and X, so we got two there and two there, okay, those are congruent. Uh, C and Y, three there and three there, yeah, those are congruent. And then that leaves D and X, uh, or D and Z, sorry, that those are obviously congruent as well. So, so far we're on the right track for similarity. In fact, we're also on track for them being congruent. However, now we have to compare the side lengths, okay? And so, also with my... Uh, just looking at my congruent statement alone, I can say that um, the ratio from AB to WX should equal uh, the ratio from BC to XY. That should equal the ratio of CD to YZ, which should also equal the ratio of DZ Oops, DZ to, <clears throat> not DZ, uh, DA to ZW. All right, so all of these should also be um, proportional. They should be the same, okay? Each ratio should be the same. We call it proportional. So if I look at AB, it tells me 15, and WX is 5, that ratio should be the same as the ratio of BC to XY. So BC looks like we have a 12 and XY is a 4. CD 21, MYZ 7, and DA compared to 18 compared to 6. Now if I reduced all these ratios, these fractions, I would get 3 equals 3 equals 3 equals 3. So in this case, yes, we can see that they're not congruent because obviously they have different side lengths. However, we do know they are similar because the ratio from, in the similarity statement, the ratio from AB to WX and BC to XY and CD to YZ and DA to ZW is the same. It's the same proportions. So we call these similar. So they are similar. And this, you see this little um, tilde sign? That is the sign for being similar. It looks like that. And uh, it does matter which order you write the letters in because, like a congruent statement, um, there's a relationship between the order. Okay? So let's just take a look here. It's very similar to congruence. It says, if triangle FGH is similar to triangle JKL, list all pairs of congruent angles and write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. Okay? So if this is the congruent statement, regardless of the... Um, the diagram at all, I know that angle F should be congruent to angle J. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it over here. 
Okay, so far it looks pretty good. Angle G should be congruent to angle K. I'm getting that just from looking at the second part of my congruent statement. So G and K and angle H should be congruent to angle L. H and L. Okay, so far so good. We have all of our angles congruent. That's one of the uh, specifications of uh, two polygons being similar. They have to have the same exact angles. And now we just need to make sure that their, um, their side lengths are proportional. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any numbers to work with, but we could say from the congruence statement which side lengths are proportional. So if I was comparing FG to JK, it should be the same. That ratio should be the same as GH compared to uh, KL. I'm just getting this from the congruence statement. There's the first one. There's the second one. And the last one comes from uh, HF over LJ. Okay. If they are truly um, proportional, this proportionality statement should also be true as well. Okay. So it's just an identification of which parts are, which ratios are the same, or which angles are congruent. The scale factor is the actual... Um, stretch or compress that we're talking about okay it it's the ratio of the lengths is the scale factor so if i have triangle abc is similar to y xyz the scale factor will be six to three because if i compare ab to xy and i compare um, bc to yz and CA to ZX, I should get the same uh, ratio on each one. So because they tell me they're similar, I only need one comparison. So it looks like I have numbers for AB and XY. So if AB is 6 and XY is 3, then I know that each of my um, ratios should be the same if they're really similar. So in this case, my scale factor would be 2. Okay, that'd be my scale factor. Um, if we were comparing XYZ to ABC, it would go the other direction. Um, XY uh, would compare to AB, and that would be equal to YZ, BC, uh, ZX, and CA. And once again, we just have information for XY and AB this time. So in this case, if we were comparing the other direction from smaller to bigger, it would be 3 over 6. So this is important right here. It depends on which way you're comparing um, your polygons as far as the scale factor is concerned. All right. So in this case, it would actually be one half. All right. So if we're comparing the smaller triangle first, it would be one half. If we're comparing with the bigger triangle first, it would be actually just two. Okay. So if you notice, they are inverses. All right, so it says determine whether the triangles shown are similar. If so, write the similarity statement and find the scale factor. Well, I see that they have one angle congruent. So I'm going to say, for my similarity statement, I'm going to say um, N and R. I'm going to start with them. And then I see the second angle that they have together would be Q and S. So I'm going to say Q and S. And then if these are the same amount as these, that leaves the same amount left for T and P. Okay. Uh, triangles of 180 degrees, if the same amount is taken out of that 180 degrees, then that means P and T must also be congruent. So I'm going to say P and T. Okay, I'm going to say that is my congruent statement. Put a little triangle sign because they are triangles this time. Um, this is what my similarity statement is going to be. And so far we're good because we know the angles are congruent. But we also need to make sure that the ratio um, of side lengths is the same. It's proportional. So when I compare NQ to RS, uh, QP to ST, and um, PN to TR should be the same fraction each time. So let's go ahead and plug the numbers in. We do have lengths for each one. 12.5 over uh, 10. And then we have 11.5 over ST is 9.2. And then finally we have PN 15 over 12. OK, 
okay? So let's just take a look here, and I'm going to simplify the one that is a whole number first. I see that that's really uh, 5 fourths, okay? And so this one actually, um, 2.5, goes into 10 4 times, and into 12.5 5 times. And then finally, it looks to me like 2.3 is going to go into 9.24 times and into 11.55 five times. So in this case, if I reduce each of these fractions, and, and if you need to use your calculator, you can always just divide 12.5 by 10, and you're going to get 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1 or if you simplify, 5 fourths for each one. Because they're angles, you have three congruent angles, and in your similarity statement, your side lengths are proportional, we know that this is similar. The scale factor in this case does say is to find the scale factor is 5 fourths. Okay? Alright, I think we're getting it. It says solve for x and y if ACDF is similar to VWYZ. So let's just compare first of all. Um, looks like I have an XV. Let's see here. Sorry, I have a ZV right there. I have a ZV, so I know that ZV, 3Y minus 1, should be compared to FA. And FA in this case is 12. So I'm going from bottom to top right now, comparing bottom to top. Um, I also know that that should be equal to. Uh, we do have a side length here, YW. YW should be compared to DC. So YW, 6, we can compare to uh, DC. In this case, it's 9. Okay, so there I have a nice proportion here. I know the side should be proportional. Um, do not get confused. Do not just say 3Y minus 1 equals 12. Okay, that's not, these are similar. They're not congruent. Okay, so the ratio of this side to 12 should be equal to the ratio of this side to 9. All right, so we have a little bit of um, an equation to solve here. So I'm going to go ahead and solve the first equation. I'm going to do the same thing here in a second to find what x is. So I'm going to cross multiply here. 9 times 3y minus 1 equals 6 times 12. And uh, I could have reduced this, of course, at the beginning. I should have done that. In fact, I'm going to do that make the numbers smaller. Uh, if you see a fraction to reduce, feel free. Um, I'm going to change the 6 ninths into 2 thirds, and I'm actually going to multiply 3 times 3y minus 1 equals 2 times 12. And it's going to make the problem a little easier with the numbers being a little smaller for me. And it's just arithmetic after that, a little bit of algebra. And I'm going to solve for y. And know that y equals 3. Now, I have one of the two variables that I'm missing. And because I already knew that the scale factor in this case was two-thirds, I can go ahead and set that two-thirds equal to my ratio for x. So it looks like we have x right here at the bottom, fd. So we're looking at fd, and our comparison was from small to big. So my fd is going to be down here at the bottom, x. And fd corresponds with zy. So we're going to say zy is 10. So if we're going from smallest to biggest, like our scale factor dictates, 10 compared to x is what we're doing, 10 over x. And once again, we just have some cross-multiplying to do. 2x equals 30. There, I didn't see anything to reduce this time. And I got the two-thirds from the scale factor. The scale factor between the similar polygons does not change. It's always going to be two-thirds. And when I solve, x equals 15. Okay, so just be careful. Don't set anything equal to each other. We're, we're only setting ratios equal to each other because that's the only congruence that we know. We don't know that 3y minus 1 is equal to 12. We know 3y minus 1 is equal to um, 3y, sorry, 3y minus 1 compared to 12 is equal to 6 compared to 9. The last one. It says that, once again, these two polygons are similar and the perimeter of each, five, the perimeter of each polygon. Okay, so if they're similar, we need to find um, the scale factor. So I'm going to look for a corresponding part that I can find that fraction of. So it looks like um, if I compare 4 there, it's not going to work. Um, 8 there, that's not going to work. 3 there, that won't work. And 6 there. Okay, so part of the problem is we don't have any specific scale factor yet. Um, let's go ahead and finish this one in class because this video is getting kind of long. We'll do this one right away, and then uh, we'll get into our normal routine. And that's it for today.